Genostem Digital Studios. I'm very excited about this. this. is one of the first of many shows that we'll be doing for The Gift for Life. We have our special guest tonight, and who will always be right here with us, the pet vet, Dr. Danny Cox. Danny, how are you? Doing great tonight, Larson. That's fantastic. And, you know, I'm, I'm so excited because we also have what I call one of our rescue heroes, and uh, also our fashionista is Miss Amy. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great, great, great. Who do we have with us tonight? Well, we have Penelope here, who will turn 14 in June, um, otherwise known as Queen of the Universe. She runs my life. <laughs> and she's taking the gift for life, too, is she? She sure is. Does she like it? She loves it. Uh, I was quite surprised when uh, she's she's not a medicine taker, treats of any kind, right. really. Uh, and uh, so when I started giving her the pill, I... I Assumed I was going to have to cram it down her throat, and instead, <laughs> um, I believe she would take the whole bottle at one time if I allowed her to. I, I know they rush to it. it it's, it's amazing things. You know, what we're doing here tonight, you know, if, if you have a pet, whether a dog or a cat, we feel that you're part of our family. And what we're building here is one of the largest Facebook communities um, because we care. We care about these pets. We care about your pet, and we absolutely love you. So we, we feel like you're part of our family. But I want to stop right now, if you guys don't mind. Because I have someone very special who's watching the show tonight. And I just want to say hello to my little boy, Loriston IV. And he'll be turning six years old. Hi! Uh, on April 14th, two days after my birthday on the 12th. So he was the most special birthday present I ever had. And he's home with his mother tonight. So, son, I just want to say I love you. Say your prayers. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Anyway, let's get to it, guys. You know, the pet world. You know, in America, 62, they say to 64% of the households have pets. And that's amazing. 1.3 dogs, 2.6 cats. And so we have a huge population of, of animals and, and these families, and we absolutely love them. And, you know, Danny, you and I have been talking about a question. You and I do a lot of radio commercials um, in, in the Dallas area. And, of course, we're streaming live. And I'm just going to get right to it um, because it's a passion of mine. I actually have, have uh, had issues with some pets that I've had, and it has to do with spaying and neutering. Now, I know that that is supposed to be taboo to talk about, that you don't spay and neuter your pets and stuff like that. But what I'm concerned is is the side effects of spaying and neutering. I've lost pets with disease that I believe had to do with endocrine disease because we have spayed and neutered these pets. Um, we have a new protocol and we also have a new technology that you are an expert in. So Dr. Danny, can you tell us really what happens about spaying and neutering our animals? What's the truth? Well, I'll be glad to talk about it. Uh, it as you said, it is a passion of mine as well, Larson. And uh, what we find is, uh, you know, these these pets have become parts of our family. They yes. We treat them so so much more today uh, than ever before as members of our family. Uh, little Penelope there is, is a very special part uh, uh, of her family. And um, so what I get concerned about is the damage that we can do if we're not careful with the, the, the technology and the medications and the things that we have. That's why I was drawn to the gift for life. The gift for life really has helped my pets, my, my patients uh, live more, you know, better lives, more longevity in their lives, uh, less discomfort. Uh, they seem to be happier. And so I think that's one of the things that, that really has made me feel confident in sitting here and talking to you and talking about it. But to answer your question, um, what we need to think about is most of the listeners out there, I'm sure, realize that if you, how important the hormones are in our daily lives as humans, okay? As we age, our androgens, uh, the, 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 the sex hormones, the testosterones, the uh, estrogens decrease. Well, that happens in our, our pets as well. Right. And so uh, one of the things about your part, your, your, uh, the Gift for Life product, is that if you take a pet that's aging, say it's eight years, we consider pets that are eight years of age or older as geriatric pets mm -hmm. now right. in, most, in most breeds. And, and uh, so we have different protocols for them as far as medical care and vaccinations uh, uh, requirements. Uh, but the biggest thing is, you know, their hormones start to decrease just like they do in people. 
And we need to think about that. And I like to bring attention to that, that uh, we start taking these hormones out of pets at an early age with spaying and neutering, for mm -hmm. example. Well, that's a, uh, a, an age-old, decades-old uh, practice by veterinary, veterinarians. And uh, I was taught, you know, I've been practicing veterinarian for 35 years, and I was taught that we spay and neuter everything uh, as early as possible. And, but we were also taught uh, how the endocrine system works, the physiology of the endocrine system, and what these hormones do in our pets' bodies. And we tend to forget about that after we get out into practice. And I say forget about it. We know it, but we have a very serious problem in this country, and that is pet overpopulation. And right. that's something we have to consider. We have to put that at the forefront. And that's why you've heard all the, 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 the people in, in the country, you know, the Bob Barkers and, and the Doris Days and the Betty Whites saying, spay and neuter your pet. I don't disagree with spaying and neutering your pet under certain guidelines and circumstances. But for the best thing, the best for these pets is to, if you're going to spay and neuter them, you do it at an appropriate age for the breed and you supplement them with the gift for life uh, to help reinstate that equilibrium in their endocrine system. The other thing is we have alternatives now to the routine spay and neuter. Well, 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 can I ask you a question about some of the hormones? There's a lot of pets out there, <clears throat> and they automatically think that they're going to have hip dysplasia because of the certain breed. But what I have found out is you also need these sex hormones in place to close up the hip plates. So if you spay and neuter too early, it's not really the hip dysplasia because of the breed. It's because they were neutered or spayed too early, and therefore the hip plates weren't able to close up, and then ligament tears or three forms of cancer, or Addison's disease, or Cushing's disease, or, or anxiety, or separation anxiety, which we'll talk about on another show. We'll talk about a little bit later, but there's such an endocrine crisis going on. So my passion was, is that yes, we have an overpopulation. It's not the pet's fault. Um, they are so innocent and true to the nature, and that's why we love them. But if you do spay and neuter, should we not also make it a protocol that you should give the gift for life that will actually work with the adrenal cortex to start producing the lost hormones and actually starting in just four days, you and I are finding out these animals are turning on again. Is that not true? That's absolutely true. And I've seen it firsthand. And again, you know, we know it as veterinarians that the hormones are important for just what you just talked about. Uh, the, 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 my big passion right now is uh, the longevity of life. You have certain breeds, the large and giant breed dogs, for example, <clears throat> They, uh, they suffer severely at different, different points in their lifespan, which is very short as compared to the small breed dogs right. like this. And they it's suffer heart, from... It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. You have, uh, you know, the number one dog in the world uh, that gets osteosarcomas, which is, is uh, bone cancer, right. are Irish wolfhounds. The youngest dog, large giant breed dog in the world that gets that disease is Great Danes. Great Danes are wonderful, peaceful, gentle giants. You have a great day. I do, and you, you bring that up for this, and let me say this. I, we talked about new techniques, new procedures. Uh, it's not really that new, but it's called an ovary sparing spay, and I took my Great Dane when she was just six months old. Right. I would never recommend and haven't in my career recommended spaying a Great Dane or neutering a Great Dane before they were at least 18 months old, and the simple reason is, and other giant breed dogs too, mm -hmm. the simple reason is, as you pointed out, the growth plates, those haven't closed yet, and you want those to grow, you want the dog to grow normally. And, and uh, that's not happening when you spam them or neuter them at six months of age. And we know that, and so we try to recommend that. And veterinarians for, for decades have recommended wait and do this later. But a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, shelter situations where they have to get them spayed or neutered, they feel <clears> like that's the thing to do before they can adopt them out, or rescue dogs and they want to get them adopted out. So they say, hey, let's, uh, let's spay and neuter this dog. It'll be easier to adopt them. I don't agree with that, but that's, you know, and, and a lot of us don't agree with that because why do they do that? Biggest reason is they talk about behavior. It's going to make the dog a better dog. It is not. I'm here to tell you there's no scientific evidence. There's anecdotal evidence that shows that some dogs will behave differently after they've been castrated 
Okay, right. we know they'll behave differently after they've been spayed because those hormones are so valuable. But to tell you what I was going to tell you about my dog uh, Pepper, she's the the Great Dane. I did an ovary sparing spay in her. I I eliminated the problem for overpopulation and I saved her hormones. And she is one of the best dogs. She's now two and a half years old, and she is slender. She's fit. She's an excellent dog. It did not change her personality in any way, except in a positive way. Common nature. It is. And, and, and can I bring up a, a discussion you and I had uh, a few months ago that when you spay and neuter uh, a, a dog or a cat, uh, and, and by the way, I've seen kittens that are being spayed out there, and it breaks my heart. It just doesn't make any sense. But no. I believe you said that when you spay and neuter an animal, that they're basically producing one half of one percent of the hormones that they had before these elective surgeries were made. Yeah, you're removing uh, about 99 plus percent of the hormones when you do the surgery. So now you've got very little left. It's being produced in the adrenal cortex. Well, let me talk about this because I know you and I have had this conversation, and the same you and I have had conversation too about this. University of California Davis Veterinarian School um, actually did a study on on uh, the golden retrievers. That's right. And you knew all about this. And after the study, they, they did that they found out, and again, I'll go over it again, when you spayed or neuter an animal, that they were finding out that you had a major increase in, in the three forms of cancer, uh, the Addison's disease, Cushing's disease, hypothyroid, even all the way down to ligament tears. Mm -hmm. and, and I've witnessed that the other day. There's two beautiful great Pyrenees that actually walk around my neighborhood, and they walk them every day, and they're absolutely amazing animals. But the male came down just by walking, with a ligament tear. And I asked him, I said, was this dog neutered? And they went, well, yes. And I went, boom, okay. So I immediately started talking to them about the hormonal replacement through the adrenal cortex naturally by giving a chewable <clears throat> treat in the morning and one in the afternoon. But uh, So I, I wanted to talk about this, but I also wanted to talk about, because I'm so passionate now, of what you do also um, in your practice as the pet vet and then also where you talk about this in the shot spots, your, your mobile hospitals that are, that are going around North Texas too, is zootering. And a lot of people have never heard of this before. You need to listen up because this is very important and you're going to love this information. Well, as you said, zinc neutering is, uh, there's, a, there's a, a procedure called zootering. We don't neuter, we zooter. Mm -hmm. And we use a uh, chemical combination of zinc uh, gluconate and arginine, and a, an amino acid that's been uh, uh, designed to sterilize the pet. The way it's administered is under light sedation, we inject a small amount of the product into each testicle. It instantly kills the, the sperm. Just an injection. Just an injection, and it's under light sedation. The dog is not at risk uh, of uh, bleeding. There's no, there's no surgery, there's no cutting, there's no pain. We do it under a technique that, that uh, we train the doctors to administer this product slowly and carefully in a manner in a certain place in the testicle right. so that we don't stimulate the stretch receptors in the tunic around the testicle, which is where the pain receptors are in the vasculature. And so the dogs wake up basically pain-free. We give them uh, anti-inflammatories for a few days to help with the swelling that will occur for, by increasing the volume in there. Right. But what the product does then, it, not only does it, does it destroy <clears throat> the sperm, it blocks and destroys the cells that produce the sperm and 50% of the cells of the testosterone uh, producing cells are, are uh, damaged as well so that they won't produce the testosterone. Now here's the nice thing, I talked about the need for testosterone. Right. We only need, the dogs only need 50% to continue normal body function, 50% of the testosterone. Without all the side effects of the Without endocrine disease. Side, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So zootering is a p common practice we've done in our practice, both at the pet vet and on the shot spot. The shot spot are our mobile uh, vaccination and zootering trucks that we drive throughout North, North Texas and Dallas, and, and uh, we uh, set up on the weekends and, and practice this uh, procedure right there on the trucks. And uh, we also have a new truck that we're going to start rolling out next month that uh, has full service on there. We do uh, spay, we'll be doing spays on there, too, and offering ovary sparing spays. Well, this truck um, is almost like a, a mobile mass unit, is it not? It is. It, we do everything. We have radiographs capabilities. We have surgical uh, room on the truck. We have, uh, uh, you know, everything that we have in our in our full service hospital right. on that truck. It's just in a confined area and we can only do things uh, under certain limitations, but we get it, we can do it all. That is fantastic. And you know, we have this in North Texas and I know that you're working 
uh, to make this go national in a certain period of time and expand this and get other doctors involved and things like that because we need this. We need this for our pet family for sure. And listen, you can get more information about Dr. Danny Cox, the pet vet, the shot spot when you go to the Gift for Life website. So when you get a chance, go to the Gift for Life website. You'll find Dr. Danny Cox there. You'll also find Dr. Preston. You'll see what she's actually using and, and actually prescribing the Gift for Life for, for different diseases. But Dr. Danny's right here. And like I said, you and I do a lot of radio together and we've been changing a lot of lives. Um, a lot of people have gotten angry at us and taken some <laughs> shots too. But when we sit down and we actually talk about what's going on, we do this out of love, not out of, and it's a little bit of frustration because we can do better. So now the question is also, Danny, when spaying and neutering or zootering is going on in your practice, the protocol now is to actually send a bottle of the gift for life home with these animals, is it not? It is. That's, uh, that's our new protocol that we've just recently instituted in our hospital. Uh, and the simple reason is what we've been talking about. It will stimulate that 1% production of, of hormone. It will equal, equilibrate or equalize everything uh, to help with uh, <coughs> immune modulation. Right. Uh, anti-inflammatory effects, of naturally occurring anti-inflammatory effects of the immune system, and um, we're seeing it. We're seeing it already. Uh, so that's something that we're trying to do uh, on a regular basis. Not everybody wants that, but we we're offering it to them. It's part of the package. Right. It's part of the spay or the neuter, <clears throat> and uh, and I try to encourage people to zooter every dog and do an ovarian sparing ovary sparing spay on every female. Right. However. A lot of people are still reluctant to do that. So this is the next best thing. And because my my feeling about uh, zootering and ovary sparing spays is the longevity, the quality of life of the pets. Right. It's, Absolutely. It, there's a lot of data that's been out for many years. And you mentioned the Golden Retriever study. That's the biggie that really hit in 2013 that showed us how serious it is when these young these dogs are spayed and neutered at a young age. Right. I mean... You know, we worry about the one thing that you're going to hear a lot about is a lot of veterinarians say, yeah, but what about mammary cancer? What about testicular cancer? Those are such minute uh, numbers in comparison to the other issues that we see in these dogs as they age that where the hormones could have saved them. It, this, these procedures can actually help prevent cancers that are ravag ravaging these animals as they age. Well, testicular cancer, let's talk about that for one second, and then we'll, we'll move on because when you told me that, I, I just had to laugh out loud. I've been told this before also. I've worked with a lot of police canine units and stuff like that, and you work with Border Patrol dogs and stuff like that, but you said that <laughs> I have the same chance, my dog has the same chance of, me, of them getting testicular cancer as I do. There's really no difference. So there's a lot of information out there that I think you should probably rethink uh, we have the technology now, and so my question to you is, if your dog and cat has been spayed and neutered, and we're trying to take care of this overpopulation, because the next segment of our show, we're going to find out why we really need to be doing some of this, but don't we owe it to our pet if they've been spayed and neutered to also give them the endocrine support for anti-aging and longevity I mean, I'll, I'll let you know this. You know, most Springer Spaniels live to the age of 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. I had a beautiful Springer Spaniel. She was spayed because that's what I was supposed to do. Um, and right at two years old, it's like clockwork, bam, hypothyroidism came down and hit us. And it all came back. And then we had other issues with the skin and the ears and stuff like that. But even with all these other problems and stuff like that, Samantha was my beautiful English Springer. She still did for 17 and a half years, documented years. So we're talking about giving you more time, a better life. And you really, if you're talking and cats are spayed and neutered today, do you really know who they are? Because once you turn that endocrine system back on again, you will see a joy and a fire in their eyes. I rescued um, a big dog over in Plano, and he was half Labrador and half Shepherd. And, of course, you, know, you say you rescued a dog, but he rescued me back. But... Uh, Brought Max home. He was neutered. He really didn't have a lot of energy. He was 67 pounds. Uh, and, and I really want you to talk about this also. This is this is very important and it's, it's fun to watch. But I brought him home. Didn't have the energy. Wanted stuff like that. Me started him on, on a wellness food. You know wellness brand. Yes. And a raw egg. And he started getting 100 milligrams of the peptide a day. Max today now weighs 103 pounds of pure muscle. He is absolutely gorgeous. 
And he's in the backyard, and, is, and he needs to go to the bathroom. He'll squat a little bit. But when we're out walking, he now hikes his leg again to leave his scent where the other dogs have leave their scent. And, of course, I say it's because his body is producing through the adrenal cortex and these peptides. Mm -hmm testosterone again max knows who he is again he is super calm he is loving he is faithful but danny what do you think about him hiking his leg again for the first time since he was a baby and he was neutered well he's back to who he should have been that's he's back to the to the to the 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 dog that he was born to be right right he's, he's marking his territory he's letting people know that he's he's there and uh, you know he's 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 that's who he is Right, he's he's, re, he's, re, he's rejuvenated, he's regenerated, he's he's feeling he's feeling what a dog should feel, um, you know, and and that's a that's a very important you know thing to think about is we want the dogs to be who they're supposed to be, and you know they were not castrated, they were not uh, uh, had ovarian hysterectomies routinely in the wild, and uh, one of the things that I take along that line too is. Something that I'm going to make a statement about here that uh, I say all the time on my trucks and in the, in the practice and when I've given talks at, at universities and, and all, mm -hmm. I say the, there's a study that was done several years ago by Dr. Jim Serpell at the University of Pennsylvania. Okay. And it's called the BARC study, the B-A-R-Q study. And that study references the fact that the most aggressive dogs in a group of dogs are the ones who have been castrated. That's very important because a lot of other people happen to think that if you leave the, the testes actually in place, that these dogs will be more aggressive. Right. And, and I, we found out that is totally the opposite. And this is going to be a future show that we're going to be doing next week about anxiety and separation anxiety. And, and think about this. If this dogs and these cats and their hormones are so messed up and stuff like that, they're just a nervous wreck. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand with, with patients where I've had people come back to me and say, you know, I don't want to give a lot of medications, and so I say, okay, we'll try this supplement. Use this supplement. Uh, this is not a medication. It's not a prescription. Try mm -hmm. this supplement. And then they come back to me within four or five days and say, my dog's anxiety is basically non-existent, and I want to buy more of this for my other dog. And then they start coming back and buying it on a regular basis. Right, right. So that goes back to what is the gift for life? Well, the gift for life is a gourmet beef liver treat. Um, you give one in the morning, you're going to give one in the afternoon. And the reason for this is because the peptide will only stay in the system for 8 to 12 hours. So to stay in homeostasis, homeostasis is just another word for balance. We want this peptide with these naturally occurring growth factors flowing through the dog's blood 24 hours a day, working with the, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenaline axis, working with the endocrine system, and you actually get to see the fire in their eyes come back on again and stuff like that. And we've got future shows where we're going to talk about getting rid of joint pain, um, calming them down with anxiety, longevity, beautiful skin, hair, and nails, and things like that. And so those will be future shows. So you've got to come back and get this information. So, Danny, thank you so much for that information tonight. Sure. I mean, we've covered a lot. I hope we've opened a lot of eyes out there. And think about it. I think your pet deserves it. They've been spayed and neutered. They also deserve your love to help them stay off these diseases and also, you know, calm them down and give them a longer life. Because I know with, with Max and my two cats, I want them with me as long as I can because I absolutely love them and they are part of my family so anyway i want you to consider that go to the gift for life website and <clears throat> read the information and it's right there in front of you and if you have any questions you can email me at info at the gift for life dot com or go to dr danny's page which is right there on the website you'll actually see all the information and you can reach out to you also and i know you'll get back with them or one of your best well and we're going to help change lives and we're going to start drying a lot of tears because some people tonight i know are looking at their pets they're getting older and they're living in fear because they're going to start looking at that clock but i have been giving life back the gift for life has actually been giving you extra time with this pet and it's great time they're rejuvenating and they're feeling great so i want you to think about that please do your homework on that in order today for your pet for a longer healthier life and we've got so much more to talk about in the future but now we've got to talk miss amy i am a big fan well, thank you. because there's a lot going on in your life and so you have to tell us right who's our guest well like i said earlier this is penelope uh, she will be 14 on June uh, 23rd, Right. and she weighs three pounds, and <laughs> she's a spitfire. Right now, she's she's ready for, for a nap, 
Uh, but uh, she, she's, she's my inspiration for Animal Rescue. And what is she wearing? She is wearing <laughs> a beautiful uh, dress here by a uh, good friend of mine, Julie Lancaster of Off the Cuff Designs, who lives in Virginia. Uh, one of the premier um, couture uh, doggy designers in the United States. Right. And uh, so she's rocking, uh, uh, you know, my favorite colors, uh, pink and black. Right, right. And, uh, you know, doing her thing. Are that. you doing your thing? <laughs> Say hi, Penelope. There she is. You know, but there's a little bit more to the story here because you are, I mean, you have rescued so many animals. And from when we've had our conversations, I, I sit back in awe of what you do and the love that you have for these pets. You've actually gone from Mexico and rescue pets from Mexico to how far have you gone? Well, um, I drive to Mexico, uh, to San Miguel de Allende, uh, where we have lived before. Right. Uh, we're back in the States now, <clears> but um, it's an 1,100-mile drive. And um, I'll drive down there and pick up uh, dogs and a few cats, occasionally cats, that have already been secured homes here, either in the United States and Canada. And I'll drive them back and either take them to their home or I'll put them on a, uh, to their new home or I'll put them on a flight, uh, you know, like I said, to California, Florida. Uh, as far away as they've gone is, is Canada. Well, you know, there's something else I'd, I'd like I'd like for you to share, if, if you would, mm -hmm. is one time you get you had a prayer because you had something that actually happened that that uh, I'd love for you to tell the story what happened. I did. I did. And okay. Danny, you were involved, and That's what actually good. happened? Well, let me show you Penelope. <clears throat> As you can see, her tongue is sticking out, and that's permanent. Um, it's permanent because. Uh, Almost nine years ago, on June 19th, 2008, uh, we'd been out of, out of the country for three weeks on a family trip. Uh, we were, arrived home in the evening one night, and the animals were so excited to see us that they just went willy-nilly in the house. Right. I had sent Dr. Cox to the store to get milk and bread. We'd been gone for three, <laughs> three weeks. Um, and while he was gone, I was trying to feed the animals. Uh, I could not find Penelope. I called her name. She came out crawling out from the under the bed, and uh, I soon discovered that uh, when I picked her up, she was wet, and um, I quickly discovered that it was blood. Oh my! And in the excitement of introducing her back to the family and the other dogs and cats and everything after being gone three weeks, we discovered that she had gone under the bed. We are guessing chasing a cat under the bed right. and had um, hit the wall <laughs> and literally uh, fractured her skull. She oh. had a head injury. Um, I quickly called Dr. Cox, who was at Walmart, and I s said, uh, Penelope's, you know, dying, you know, there's something wrong, and uh, he knows that his wife is a little obsessive about the animals. He told me to calm down, that she would be fine. I said, no, she's not going to be fine. He said, I'll meet me at the clinic. I'll head to the clinic. I got in the car, right. and that day, um, while trying to drive and hold her, I had quite the conversation with God. Mm -hmm. um, I <clears throat> hollered as a matter of fact, and my fists went in the air. And I often wonder, almost nine years later, what the other drivers around me must have been thinking by if they had looked my way to see this crazy woman screaming and hollering in the car. But that day, I pledged to God that if he would spare Penelope's life from that moment forward, I would devote the rest of my life to saving his special creatures. And um, as you can see, she is here with us almost nine years later. Her tongue sticks out, and she walks sideways like a crab. Uh, but other than that, she's perfection to me, and she is my best friend in the world. And so she is truly my inspiration for doing what I do uh, because um, I thank God every day for allowing me to be her mom. And uh, I have helped, I hope, other uh, moms and dads uh, increase their family with adding a wonderful dog or cat into their life. Right. So she's my inspiration. Right so, Danny, here. you were waiting there to take care. Oh, yeah. And Penelope was introduced uh, when she came into the clinic. She had no uh, uh, vision. She couldn't see. She couldn't write herself. She couldn't breathe on her own. We quickly got her on a ventilator and, and started uh, breathing for her. Uh, we had to make some decisions very quickly to uh, how to treat her. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was my hand administering the medications, but I assure you, I didn't heal her. Right. That must have been... I, I couldn't even imagine. Um, yeah. Well, it was pretty traumatic. Actually, they sedated me. Yeah, we, Seriously, we did. Seriously, they were concerned that I was going to have a heart attack. And I understand that pain. And I, I think we all Absolutely. know that pain. When we go into 
you ever been to an emergency vet, which you used to work? I did. I spent three years working overnights at the Collin County Emergency uh, Animal Hospital. And, and we don't know what to do, and we, and we put our confidence in, and thank God that we have Dr. Danny right here with us, and thank God, Amy, we have you also mm -hmm. because you are saving lives. And uh, I, I want you to talk briefly about the, the truck that you have because we're going to be talking about this in future shows and everyone can get involved. But I saw this truck yesterday and I got so excited to think what the potential we're going to be able to do this. Not just about your, your mobile clinics, but now what you're doing with your truck. Well, I'll just, I'll just briefly say um, there are certain areas of the country that <clears throat> have more of a uh, overpopulation of animals than others. Uh, the south here, uh, along the border uh, area, especially Texas and some of your southern states, um, our laws are not the same as in other states. Our spay and neuter laws and things like that are not as effective as other states. Um, and there are parts of this country, the United States and Canada, that um, have a, a shortage of, of animals. Not that they can't go to a breeder, but there are people who want to rescue animals. Right. And there is a... Uh, uh, I hate to use the word business, but a movement where animals can be taken from states like Texas and transported uh, to the East Coast and to Canada. Literally, you pack them in vehicles where they've already secured homes, and you take them up there. Uh, ch That's uh, amazing. Chihuahuas are very prevalent in California. They're euthanized at a high rate because there's so many. Yet on the East Coast, people want small chihuahuas. The apartment dwellers in Manhattan and the high rises, they want the small animals. So we take the chihuahuas that are being killed in, in California and we transport them to the East Coast. We take animals here from Texas and we transport them to the East Coast and Canada. People literally get on waiting lists for months to get some of these animals. It is a process, but it can be done. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping to be able to, to play a big role in that uh, and, and uh, provide a uh, transport vehicle that I believe we can get 30, maybe 40 uh, animals in at a time, and we'll just drive them up to their new families. And we're going to help get this truck in shape, and we're going to start posting pictures, and we're going to see it coming along. And if you guys would like to get involved, then please let us know. This will be some information that we'll give in a future show. Um, but, you know, Amy, what you just said, I had a conversation with uh, an old friend of mine, Lisa Facenda, and she was telling me that she has friends in Minnesota right now that are looking for pets, and if they could get a, a rescue of pet and stuff like that, they will stand in line. So maybe on one of our first trips we'll be heading is, is to Minnesota. I'll go. leave that up to you. Right. Well, I know it's hard to believe, but, uh, I mean, it, it, it happens, and there, there's a great need. It, it's, just, uh, it, it's just a process that you have to put into place and, and, right, right. And, uh, and get the wheels going on these vehicles. And there's volunteers. I've had people volunteer to drive with me. We would drive in shifts. I mean, you can't, you know, if you travel with two or three dogs, like when I drive from Mexico, it's easy for me to stop on a 21-hour drive, for me to stop and let the little dogs go out and potty. Right. You know. But when you've got 40, 40 dogs, you know, you need to keep you need to keep it going you need to drive straight through so you know it's it's a process but it can be done there's a need for it to keep animals from being euthanized in the states that, that have a, an overabundance of animals and get them to the uh, states and like I said even even Canada uh, where people are desperately um, looking to, to, to help save the lives I think we need to all work together we can and this is Absolutely. another reason why if you would please share this video and, and join our family. We want to become the biggest community on Facebook. And the reason is, is because we're changing lives and we're going to find these pets homes and we're gonna show you a way to actually take care of your pet and give them the best health and longest, happiest life with you. But you know what? I can't let you off the hook so much because <laughs> I know who you are. Oh, you yeah? are the <laughs> ultimate Fashionista, when well, it comes to, yeah. and Danny, back me up on this, <laughs> when it comes to pet fashion, and you're a champion in pet fashion shows from Miami all the way to New York. You are famous in that world, in many worlds, but I, I've seen your costumes, and Danny, I've seen <laughs> what you've done, <laughs> and you guys are amazing. We're going to put these pictures up, but can you please talk a little bit about the fashion world and these pets and a little bit of clothing and things like that. And what does that world actually consist of? Because when I heard about it, I just went, what? You're kidding. It was something I wasn't even aware of. And it's, do you want to talk about having fun? Yeah, you guys are having a blast. So let, let's talk about the fashion world. 
Absolutely. Well, I'm just one of many. Um, there are numerous events, some bigger than others, in different parts of the United States. They benefit animal rescue. Uh, so if I go to New York, it's benefiting a local uh, rescue or several there. If I go to Florida, it's been benefiting uh, you know uh, some rescues there. Right. D different you know different events uh, uh, highlight a different rescue. Um, there are uh, doggy couture passion, uh, fashion designers. Uh, doggy couture. Doggy couture. Absolutely. Of course. Uh, many that are that are well known um, and uh, have become very good friends of mine. Right. Um, Anybody want to say hello to? Um, I'd like to say hello to to my number one designer, uh, Danielle Purcell from um, So Dog Gone Creative. Hello, Danielle. Uh, Julie Lancaster from <laughs> Off the Cuff. Uh, uh, Darlene Hatchie from um, Julie, Princess Darlene. Lily. Right. Ada uh, Neves and Miguel Garcia, New York City. I could go on and on. Uh, Anthony Rubio, who just uh, gave a huge fashion show uh, uh, during Fashion Week in New York uh, last month. He not only does he do, do dog fashion, but he does human fashion. Very couture. Uh, this is a subculture, a world unto itself. And the money that can be raised at these events is staggering. The outfits that these dogs wear. Right now, this is, this is, a, this is just a little go-to-the-grocery-store type of dress. <laughs> um, we do major gowns with yards and yards of fabric, Swarovski crystals. Uh, I've, I I've seen it. I've seen it. And, and, and I, was, I couldn't believe what I was looking at because it's, some of this is, is totally handmade and it's absolutely beautiful. Yes. And how much do some of these dresses go for? Um, well, uh, with, with my husband here, uh, Dr. Yeah, Cox, I don't know if I want to tell him exactly exactly what I spend. That's why I have um, those trucks. But, just, but, but, but I, I, I will tell you, I will tell you a, a couture gown uh, can run anywhere from $300 to um, some of these who, people that I just named. If they put Swarovski crystals and things like that, they'll easily, easily be $1,000 plus. And... Uh, uh, you know that gown can be worn. It can, you know, it helps to raise money. Uh, you know that type of thing. Um, Headdresses, uh, jewelry. It, it's just, it's just a Amazing. wonderful uh, world that that helps the animals. Um, a lot of our friends uh, are professional models. We've got Baxter uh, in New Jersey, who's a professional model. You show um, me a picture. Yeah. Absolutely, a uh, ZZ. Uh, who's in New York City and Angel Song and Sadie? Uh, their moms are uh, good friends of ours in New York, and these events are so heartwarming to go to. Not only do you get to see the the dogs in the beautiful clothes, but you know that the money raised is is going to help support animals who will never have the opportunity uh, to not only go to a fashion show, but but maybe even live. We're, we're trying to save their lives. And, and I, I want to interject. The majority of those those pets are animals that came out of shelters, came Absolutely. off the street. Uh, you know, we have some little dogs that uh, literally were within minutes of of being euthanized in the shelter for an wow. injury or an illness. And you know, Amy's and her friends they've gone, they've gotten these dogs, and uh, they bring them to us in some cases, or they take them to the veterinarians in in other parts of the country. And uh, it's our job to help. You know bring them back to where they should be. And, 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 and now and, they're walking the runway. We just, yeah. uh, one of the premier events in the United States is the New York Pet Fashion Show, and it's every February, and it highlights the opening of Fashion Week and Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show in New York. Um, actually, we won first prize in February, and I was very proud to do so. Um, we've won the Tompkins Square Pet Parade, which is the largest pet event uh, in the world. Over uh, 10,000 people and uh, 400 dogs were there. We've won that. Congratulations. Uh, yes. And again, it, it, it's an unusual way to get the word out to people about animals and rescue. And I, I, I feel that if I can use my passion and a, and a hobby of mine in, in clothing and makeup and frou <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to use it as my platform. Uh, as you can see, my rescue is called the Paws Cause, and I bling it out every chance I get. And uh, to, to, to use the Sorry. to use my my message to and my dogs uh, to get the message out about animal rescue. Well, we're going to be talking more in the future about the paws cause, and I'm also going to give a little hint, maybe a little secret here, that maybe in Dallas, in the near future, we may have one of the biggest dog fashion shows coming up. But that's for another show that you'll have to stay tuned about that. But uh, I think Dallas deserves it. And we do everything big in Texas. Everything. So why wouldn't we do this? 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I might just give that some thought. Any we'll idea has oh, an interest about that? I don't know. I'm, I, as does. I've been told before, I'm full of it. <laughs> so, full of love. We'll just leave it at that. Absolutely. You know, so listen, guys, we've ran over a little bit today. We hope that you join our family. Please share the video. Um, tell people about us. This is very important information because we want your pets to live a longer, healthier life. We now have the technology to be able to do this where before we didn't. That's right. And so we're, we've actually, we're, we're changing lives, and, and it's important. And there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of lives that we're going to change. There's a lot of homes that we can get some of these pets home to you, and, and, and it's important. So this is just the first of many shows um, next week, I would like to talk about the protocol now for anxiety and and the social or the pet anxiety that we're having, okay. and uh, the separation anxiety too, and what we can do to calm these little pets down. These these you know it, they don't deserve this, and we can do a better job. And next week, you're going to find out more about that. And also, next week, Miss Amy, if you can talk to me and talk to everyone out here mm -hmm. in our audience also about. What is the difference about being a foster, adopting, or rescue? There's actually some things that I learned that I never really knew before, and it's extremely important, and it just opened up a whole new world to me because we can do more fostering and get more of these dogs out of these kill shelters and give them a chance where we have time to find their homes. Absolutely. Um, I just say quickly that you don't have to be a veterinarian like Dr. Cox here to be able to save a life. You too can do it, and I can tell you how. That is, and, and that information is coming up, so you really want to listen to this. So, you know, um, please, in closing, remember to adopt and rescue. It, it's so important. Um, we, we have so many dogs tonight that are, that are needing a home. It's important to them, and it's definitely important to you to fill your house full of love. And uh, so, you know, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for, for being on our first show. We love you guys. We love your pets. Please join our family. Spread the video. Go to thegiftforlife.com, and you'll find out more information. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.